He mentioned the dreaded B word, so we got to go there, don't we? Yeah, of course. Why don't you take Anthony it there, Anthony Crescenzi please. on Bitcoin in your new <laughs> book with negative rates. Do you have a chapter on Bitcoin? Well, there's a few words to say. Well, central banks, one reason the Fed is not is deciding against the negative interest rates is because it's costly to banks. It costs three basis points per month for a bank to, to have more physical cash to, to send to give to us out of ATMs. Why? Because it, for whatever reason, it costs money to have it shipped and stored. And that's the 35 basis point cost just from uh, moving to negative rates. Because if there's a negative rate, all of us individuals will say, well, I want my money out of the bank. I don't want to get charged for keeping it there. Give me cash. And that that's costly. And there are numerous other facts. But with Bitcoin, theoretically, the Fed could shift to a minus 200, 300, 400 basis points because there is there is no physical arbitrage. Uh, that put that as, putting that aside. Uh, let's keep in mind, Bitcoin is not not money. There, it's a it's a form of exchange. Uh, and there's three ways of exchanging money. One is physical. Of course, we have cash and coins. Second is electronic through a trusted third party like the Fed. When we send money through an ATM or some other electronic means, it's through a trusted source. And third is the other electronic source, which is Bitcoin. Uh, it has no trusted source. Um, and that's where uh, it gets a little dicey because what it's one thing to see uh, volatility in a currency, but it's, it's totally another to see volatility in the exchange mechanism, the way that money pe people are paying paying for things. And so uh, at some point, regulation will come along. But um, it, if you're investing in Bit Bitcoin in part, you're investing in the technology, which is a totally different story. And I can't opine on that, but it does look like Bitcoin is the winner in this game of electronic money, digital money. Tony, this seems uh, fascinating. I know you're not making a call and you don't want to make a call on Bitcoin. However, you are giving it credence as an alternative or some sort of digital store of money, the digital gold. And my question is, are we going to get a mass debasement of fiat currencies in the wake of the, uh, the money printing as well as some of the negative yields, this idea that people need a store of actual uh, cash that's somewhere away from these monetary authorities? Uh, Bitcoin, as I said, without a trusted source, uh, not having the hegemony, the leadership of the potent potency of the United States uh, politically, economically, and militarily to protect the value of money is important. Bitcoin lacks all of that, doesn't have the full faith and credit of the giant and massive and potent U.S. government behind it. So, we, so when we say fiat currencies, we might be pointing to some, uh, uh, but remember, Bitcoin itself is, is fiat, and so one has to be careful about that. But there is a, a notion about Bitcoin that, that is similar to gold, of course. One could move into it because they decide uh, certain currencies is not worthy uh, anymore, and then, of course, move into some other currency eventually. It's sort of like a bridge. And so in that sense, uh, it's, it's, it, has, it has a store value element like gold, and it's one of the appeals that uh, certainly the proponents are pushing. You've worked at the New York Fed. You have a lot of experience. It, just in general, do you think that the Federal Reserve will push for some sort of digitization of the U.S. currency in order to avoid some of the frictions that's been discussed? Um, central banks seem to be moving in that direction. China is probably the most uh, far ahead. Europe is ahead of the United States. Uh, so the U.S. timeline, uh, at least with the, the current regime, looks like it's at least five years out. But um, the world is moving in that direction, and uh, uh, the Federal Reserve will have to keep looking at it. And as you know, they take a long time to do things. It took them near a year and a half to two years to uh, develop a new one-page document, new framework uh, that simply said, uh, we're going to let inflation run.